All right, we're back with Larry Vickers, and we pretty much devolved into 1911 hell. Um, <laughs> I um, I remember my first 1911 was a um, was a Kimber Ultra Raptor, and in your, in your, in there, clearly, of course, I buy my first 1911 is basically compact version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no surprise there. To it should be no surprise to anybody with respect to me, uh, but. It was definitely, you know, I was always drawn initially to the beauty. Um, and I know a lot of people uh, give me a lot of crap for my overemphasis on the way guns look. And I, I don't have any shame about that, and I continue to do it. But <laughs> I, I, I will say, to this day, I, I, I don't think the most beautiful 1911 that I've ever seen compared to the most beautiful non-1911 gun I've ever seen, 1911 wins hands down all day, every day. Yeah, I would agree with that, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, 100%. And I think in a lot of ways too, like you said, you do kind of have to become your little, your, your own kind of uh, uh, armor in a sense, you know, if you really want to own your 1911 and really get it to run exactly the way you want it to run. And I know it's to some people, especially in our, our microwave day and age, when we just want things out of the box, ready, good to go and, you know, hit the road, which is, which is it's understandable. Um, I think there's, there's something to that though. Um, I think you, you, you're kind of almost forced to develop a kind of intimate relationship, um, no pun yeah. intended, with your firearm um, that you're not going to get on, say, your Glock. And, and it's something about working with actual metals and woods that, that mm -hmm. tend to be a little bit more organic in that sense. I know I'm getting kind of lofty and airy-fairy, but it's truth. I agree. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, a lot of people agree with you because I tell you, the 1911 is still an extremely popular handgun. <laughs> very, very popular handgun. I mean, there's... Yeah, granted, we live in a Glock world, but I'm going to tell you what, second to a Glock, man, 1911s, they're yeah. very popular pistols. Yeah, no, I, they absolutely are. And I hope they remain that way. Um, I, I think they're needed. Um, quick, quick quick, personal question. I'm going to be a little selfish here. Um, I was at the gun store the other day, and um, I have a HK45, full-size tactical. Um, I'm running a – and I went, to the, I went to the gun store yesterday, and I, and I saw a used – uh, HK45 compact tactical, and I'm debating between right now my bedside gun is that is the full size version of that tactical gun. I have it fitted with a Omega K um, from Silencer Co. And I, my thought process is why don't I get the compact version uh, since they are both ten? I get I can run both ten round magazines in either, each of the guns, and then kind of get a smaller setup because it can be a bit unwieldy with the uh, full size version. Um, what are your thoughts on that with respect to... You know, uh, if, if you're not holstering it, uh -huh. you know, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd roll with what you got. Roll with what I got? One of those things where, you, hey, I am going to carry it concealed on uh -huh. occasion or whatever. Yeah, you can definitely make the argument that the compact version is going to be a more concealable handgun. Gotcha. For sure. The HK45 full-size gun is a duty size, size gun. Yeah, yeah. And right. I, I love it to death. I love it to death. I think I just had this... I think, you know, my, there's good you brought that up because I think my mind always goes to carry, even though I have no intentions on carrying the gun. I don't carry 45s. Um, and I think in my mind, I always think, okay, how can I make this smaller? How can I make this a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, which is fine with concealed carry, but not so much so. I mean, I, I think it's Yeah, hey, you're grabbing that thing off your, uh, you know, in the middle right. of the night. Yeah. The, you know. The bigger, slightly bigger pistol, not that big of a deal. Absolutely. Um, I, or I low-key could just be looking for another reason to buy another gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so so, talk to me now about uh, the Vickers Glock uh, that, that mm -hmm. you're going to be coming out with now. I mean, those have been extremely popular as of late. I remember uh, I was in Houston, I want to say about a year ago, um, when we were doing the, the RTF gray, gray frame. And mm -hmm. I saw one at a gun store. And I was like, I should buy this right now. And I was like, oh, I'm going to wait and think about it a little bit. And Ooh, I, bad yeah, move. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I can't, now I, I can't find them. And then when I do, oh, uh, man, the, 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 yeah, the resale guys have pretty much, it's like the gun world's turning into the shoe world. <laughs> so, um, but so, so, so what's new now? What, what, what do you have on the horizon with respect to the... Uh, well, stuff? we're revisiting the flat, dark earth. Okay. And we're going to revisit the first initial serial number range. Um, somebody's got some good music going on there. <laughs> you just got Dude, up AC DC, right? They must have done. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> big, huge AC DC fan. Anyway, uh, we're revisiting the flat dark earth okay. and we're revisiting the initial serial number range. The, the initial Vickers tactical Glocks with, with, from Lipsy's uh -huh. were flat dark earth frame, black slide. 
um, and then had an LAV suffix serial number. Gotcha. The next one's coming out. We're going to revisit that. We're still going to keep things a little bit close hold because, you know, we don't want to give away everything you know, <laughs> this far out. But we're looking tentatively, I think, late May, uh-huh. and uh, it's going to be dynamite. If you're, if you're a fan of the guns, you're going to want one, of course. If you were a fan of the flat, dark earth ones, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you're going to want one. Gotcha. Now, um, I think I may have asked you this question, talked to you about this before in private more so than on the show. Um, what, 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 what was it about the Glock 17 that made you want to come out with your own series and versions of the Glock 17 and kind of add your touch to it? Well, you know, I've had people ask me, hey, if you had to go overseas, yeah. you're going to be overseas a year and, and, and you had to sustain, you had no, you know, whatever spare parts you brought, whatever is what you would need to sustain that pistol. What pistol would you take? It'd be a Glock 17. Hmm. Um, why is that? For, just, I, I know I have my reasons why, and I think I know yours, but for those who don't know, why is that? It's a, it's really an excellent handgun. Yeah. It really is. It's not only reliable and more than adequately accurate, but it's very easily maintained on an individual level. An individual with not a lot of skill, I mean, yeah. you don't have to have a lot of gunsmith skills, to can maintain, swap parts out, it just it's a superb handgun it really is yeah um so that i mean i'm i'm, I'm a form follows function guy gotcha and um you know i would I'm, interestingly enough you brought up 1911s i would argue that the glock 17 now is, is the 1911 19... of today bingo yeah because you look it. at the contemporaries look at when the 1911 started uh-huh. and where and what was it was competing against and then now fast forward to today and really the glock is the, the glock yeah it's kind of the standard. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? Take well, Next time you get a chance, I had a buddy turn me on to this. If you count each individual part, the 1911 and a Glock have almost exactly the same number of parts. Are you saying I never knew me, that? Yeah, almost exactly the same. you got to count all the little bits and pieces, pieces, like okay. the, the frame rail inserts that have been molded uh, in. Okay. you got to count all that stuff because it's an individual component. Yeah, yeah. you might not disassemble it for maintenance purposes, but you got to count that. And when you do, it's almost exactly the same number of parts. Gotcha. They're now, just, it's just an excellent handgun. Now, um, I'm going to put you on a block here. But so when you have guns like, say, for instance, the HKVP9, um, that there's no denying that, I mean, they, they're following suit in terms of what the Glock has been able to do. You know, there's this, this striker fire craze now. Um, I don't think it's a crazy anymore. I think it's been solidified. You know, we, oh, we yeah, are, for we sure. The, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. We're in age of striker fire. Frankly, yeah. it's the standard now. Yeah. yeah. Striker fired polymer frame, they're the standard. Now, now uh, just kind of off the top, what do you think a, another gun company would have to do in order to kind of knock the Glock off of its pedestal? Because as, as much crap as we give the Glock, and I give them a lot of crap, um, I don't know anybody at Glock, I have no contacts with Glock, I'm pretty sure they hate me, but... Um, I, I I always wondered in my own mind, like what what could a company come out with? And the companies are trying; they're trying feverishly um, to kind of knock the Glock off of a, off its pedestal. Um, do, do, one, do you think it's possible? And two, what do you think would need to happen in order for something like that? To well, happen? here to knock it off the number one spot, I can tell you, is not going to happen. Gotcha. And and the reason here's a couple reasons why. One, had Glock has such a head start. Mm-hmm. Glock did a number of things well. They've done great marketing. Uh, they've reached out to law enforcement agencies. They've they've done the legwork and the groundwork to get themselves embedded. And the other thing is, the Glock pistol, it, it kind of checks all the good boxes. You yeah. can go, well, there's other guns with better triggers. Yeah, but, but you know, the trigger's usable. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, they're reliable. The spare parts are readily accessible. The spare magazines are readily accessible. It's, it's one of those things that just kind of brings it all together. Um, and I tell you, as far as knocking it off number one, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. What you're going to see, though, is your guns like your HKVP9, which is a great pistol. Yeah. I really like the VP9. Yeah, I mean, so actually, I. it's my favorite of all striker-fired polymer frame handguns yeah. is the VP9. That's my favorite. It's, it's mine, too. But <laughs> I, I really like it. Uh, I shoot it very well. But you're going to yeah. see guns like the VP9, the Walther, right, PPQ, the new CZ, which I think has a lot of potential. I saw it at SHOT Show. The gun, I think, has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. You're going to see those guns come to the market, and they have a lot more features. 
and they're going to start nipping, nipping at it. the edges gotcha. yeah, of Glock's market share. I think Glock is going to lose uh -huh. some market share of those never be guns, knocked off. but they're definitely not going to be lost. They're not going to lose the number one spot. Gotcha. So basically, it's kind of like they've been in a room by themselves, and they're never going to get kicked out of the room, but they're going to have to maybe start sharing some space in that room. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Gotcha. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, man, ah, oh, man, I could talk to you about this all day. We should just have you on for the entire show. <laughs> but but I uh, really appreciate it. And I hope you can come back on and we can do some more talking about some. Absolutely, bro. Anytime. If I can make time, I'm here with you. Count awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Larry. Good to, good to have. Good to see you, bro. Be safe. Absolutely. You too. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're talking hunting with sportswoman Courtney.